Folks, it's Sunday Pup Day. I'm not even gonna. I, I'm not even gonna do anything. I'm just gonna straight up go right into it because you don't want to see me. You don't. You don't want to see me. You want to see this motherfucking puppy. Let's just do it. Let's do the puppy reveal. Let's get it out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, it brings me incredible amounts of pleasure to show you the newest member of the uh, the Piker family. Hold on, I gotta close this door real quick. One second. You can't even see anything yet. Hold on. Bam! There it is. She's she's uh, whimpering a little bit right now because uh, I I put her in this crate for the first time, like not crate. This she's never been here before. She's never been in this part of the house before. But there she is. Now, of course, I'm not going to just sh I'm going to give you a, a closer look in one moment, but and tell you all the adventures I had to go through to get her. There she is, uh, my my currently unnamed, my currently unnamed pupper, who we will be naming today on stream. That's right. She's a big gal. She's a really big girl. Um, she's only seven and a half weeks old, or uh, well, uh, we're unclear on whether or not if, if she's seven weeks or eight weeks old. Uh, that part was not communicated to me uh, all that well. But she's massive already. So. You're probably wondering how I got here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, MBs, we don't know what uh, this puppy's breed is. Uh, she is a Mastiff breed, possibly a Tibetan, possibly a Tibetan Mastiff breed mixed with some other stuff. I keep misgendering her, unfortunately, because I'm not used to having a, I mean, Fiona is a female, Marat's dog. But I'm not really that used to having it. Oh, she's taking a like into the microphone already. Let her speak. She don't speak unless she doesn't really speak too much. She's not very uh, loud unless it's last night and she refuses to fucking sleep in the crate. Oh, my Lord. Has she met Fiona yet? No. She doesn't only speak when spoken to. She just doesn't speak at all unless, uh, unless she's, uh, you know, upset that you put her in a crate, which is normal for puppies this age. You have to crate train. Hold on. Hold on. Look at this. 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 Look at this little pupper. Uh-uh. Okay, don't move. Don't move. Uh, okay. There she is. Okay. So, today's stream is going to be a, uh interesting one. Probably not a super long one because... I'll be honest, this is all I've been doing. I, all I've been doing is just like spending time with her and not really doing anything else, being a dog dad this entire time. Um, yesterday, is she soft? Yes, yeah, she's incredibly soft. Her fur is super soft. So here's what happened. Okay, let's get, let's get into it. Let's explain the situation at hand. How do we get here, right? This is a question that people have. Well, I'll tell you. So... I went to the adoption agencies. Uh, I went to all of the 501c3s. And there were a lot of puppers that were great there. Okay. But the way that I got Fish, who was also a rescue, was completely coincidental and completely random. Right? 
Fish is my first dog, for those of you who don't know, uh, who was with me for six wonderful years. And, um, you know, he was he was just like left at an Orange County tire shop. So I'm a big fan of Kismet, you know, fate uh, with and vibes as well. Big, big, big fan of vibes with dogs, but also with uh, Kismet as well. So what did I do? I went on Craigslist and I looked for big breeds and I found a Mastiff breed. This was the Mastiff breed. She's uh she comes from a family. We don't know what her mom is. The uh the family wanted to have her but realized that she is going to be too big for their daughter. And the dude who had her originally was like yeah, she eats way too much already. And also on top of that, like we already have some big dogs and I'm having a child. Now, why is the I'm having a child important as far as this uh, component goes? Well, the reason why it's important is because originally I was supposed to go today to get her. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. She's trying to get up. She's trying to get back on the table. Um, so originally I was supposed to go and, and get her today. Uh, Ray and I were going to go travel over there, you know, IRL it a little bit too, and then, uh, come back into the puppy stream here, but that didn't happen. Why? Well, because my man's wife went into labor, like his actual wife. Yeah. And he was like in panic mode. He's like, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. If you want this dog, he's like, brother, if you want this dog, you got to come get her <laughs> literally tomorrow. So instead of going to a wedding like I was supposed to on Saturday for my friend uh, Jack Wagner, I had to travel. I was like, congratulations, but like, dude, what the fuck? So I had to travel over uh, to an area in California to go grab this little thing and then bring her home. And, and then afterwards, there was no shot. I was a, I was going to be able to stream. Let's be real. Where are you going? Where are you going? Uh-oh. You're getting active. She loves... She's very curious. Okay. She's very, very curious. Anyway, hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to put her down. There she is. Okay. So... Anyway, here, um, so yeah, I picked her up, I brought her home, and I, I've, I've, been a, I've been a puppy dad already, as you guys know. Um, you know, I took care of, of fish. I, I raised that thing uh, when he was like literally a tiny, basically barely above a fetus, right? So, you may notice that she's laying on the bars, just like on the blast off photo on the puppy reveal blast off photo, she's laying on these metal bars. The reason for that is because she likes the cold weather. So that is the reason why she's doing that. She loves, uh, she loves metal bars so far. She loves, uh, you know, playing with chew toys and crying at night nonstop. When I try to crate train her. Um, that's, that's it for, uh, for the, for the puppy reveal side of things. Anyway, so brought her home. Uh, obviously it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work to have a puppy. So I went straight into it and I haven't really stopped. I haven't done anything. I was supposed to go to Jack's birthday. Didn't do that. Didn't go to the wedding. And also on top of that, I was supposed to work out this morning and play basketball. With my trainers couldn't do that either. Unfortunately, because, you know, uh, she is, I'm a dad now. I'm a new dad. You're kind of problematic for not sleeping in the crate with her. Cancel, give her the stream key. So for those of you who are wondering, like, what's her breed? Uh, we don't know. We don't know what her full breed is, okay? But I did get one of these things. I don't know. It's just like the first thing that came up on Amazon. It's a dog DNA test. So it's a puppy and me. 
puppy three and me, puppy 23 and me, um, it will probably take a long time. I mean, I don't know how long it takes for you to get like, get the results back. But anyway, she's not vaccinated. She only has gotten dewormed. Holy fuck. Scum art is so fast. How is this even possible? This motherfucker. How did you do this? Like, I, I don't even under, this was, bro, that is literally insane. I just, I just revealed this, this dog. Anyway, as I was saying, I did that and found out my German Shepherd Husky Misk is actually part wolf. So vets can do a DNA and have reports to you in hours. Yeah, but I'm not doing it through, uh, do you want to give the dog autism? What the fuck's wrong with you? Yes. I'm going to give her a uh, dog autism and she's going to be gay. Um, as I was stating, she's not vaccinated yet. So I have to get her vaccinated first round of vaccines like this upcoming week. And then, uh, I think by the end of like the 16 week process, she'll get fully vaccinated so she can be around other dogs as well. Obviously I need to keep her indoors for the most part. I use the same company. They just told me my dog was an American village dog adopted from Mexico. No breakdown of the breeds. Wait, really? Okay. Well, anyway, and you might've noticed that she doesn't have a name yet. I do have some ideas for names and I want to ask you guys, and we're going to look at like training videos. We're going to look at like breed videos. Look at her pushing the crate already. She's so big. Like you can't really tell for, uh, I mean, not for, for eight weeks old. She's pretty fucking chunky. So we'll see. But, um, I have, uh, I have names that I like. And we will find, uh, and I will, you know, heavily uh, skew in favor of. And I will ask you guys if you think that, you know, if you think that that's good or not. But, so after a long process, um, we got this Mastiff mix, okay? Uh, I don't know what her breed is entirely. I, I think she's like a Tibetan uh, Mastiff mixed with some other, like, big dogs, Maybe keep her up now so she sleeps during the night. The unfortunate reality is that um, these dogs, like, because she's got, like, a Tibetan Mastiff in her, they apparently are uh, nighttime dogs, like, they're guardian dogs. So uh, they don't sleep at night. They they sleep during the day, and then they they stay up at night. And they just like roam the house or uh, roam normally if you have like a big open space. Looks like she has Leon Burger in her. Possibly. We don't know. Is she spayed yet? No, man. No, of course she's not spayed yet. She's fucking eight weeks old. No, I I'm not. I'm not spaying or neutering my fucking dog, uh, especially because she's a big breed until she's like at least a year and a half old. Okay. Motherfuckers, you're right. Obviously, you have to spay and neuter your animals so that they don't accidentally end up having fucking litters. Uh, you know, like I get that. That's how that's how fucking uh, animals get. Uh, you know, that's how the that's how the that's how the uh, uh, the shelters are filled to the fucking brim with dogs. But like, I'm not neutering a large dog, a large breed. One over one year is too old to get spayed. Shut up. I don't know about spaying, but neutering. Neutering, uh, at least with larger uh, breeds, is supposed to be done later in their lives. We've already talked about this. Her fucking hips haven't even formed fully yet. You're over here. Uh, you're over here talking to me about what I'm supposed to be doing. Shut up. Okay. I'm not going to listen to random chatters. I'm not going to listen to vet MD. I'm going to listen to fucking a vet that I trust. Okay. Man, invest in that doggy dubbers for the first heat cycle. Thank me later. Yeah, I heard. I know. I heard. I heard. As I was stating, I can't even finish a goddamn story here. I played, I played with her all day. I played with her all night. She basically, uh, she gets the zoomies for a little bit, runs around, plays with some toys. Okay. And then she will literally sleep for like 40 minutes only to briefly wake up in between, take a pee directly next to the pee pad while looking straight at me dead ass in the eyes and then falling immediately into the pee pad falling immediately into the pee pad or not into the pee pad sorry into the piss puddle okay and then running up to me to play with me again while she's covered in piss so that's that's basically her personality so far she's awesome she loves exploring 
Uh, and she loves pissing not on the pee pad, but next to it for some weird reason. Um, as far as poops goes, as far as poopies, we are, uh, she's pooped three times so far in this house. And, um, no, four times so far in this house. She poops a lot because she eats a lot. She's a big girl. And, um, I have an outside pad on my balcony. It's like a natter, uh, natty, natter. It's like more natural. Uh, it's like a biodegradable, disposable outside pad that I have for her. Which she pooped on already. And also she has pooped twice. She's also pooped twice on regular poop pee pads as well. However, last night when I tried to start crate training her, she immediately took a shit in the crate. She got into the crate and immediately took a shit in the crate and started fucking screeching so i had to put her in the sink and like wash her little fucking paws because she was covered in poop and then clean up the goddamn crate as well because that was also covered in poop but it didn't it didn't stop curious of you said why you needed a massive dog nothing wrong with it but big guy doesn't mean big dog necessarily i like big dogs man I like having a big dog. Fish was uh, big as well, and I loved it. I, I like being able to like wrestle with my dog. I have to look get, look into getting a snuggle puppy. They have a heartbeat and heat beat inside and help with puppy crate training. I don't know what that is, but maybe. So we don't know what her like. I don't know what her her uh, like actual full blown breed is, but because she has. Uh, some Tibetan Tibetan massive in her. I'm just like operating off of that. And uh like I looked up like people were saying she might be Leon Burger puppy. So I looked up some of the some of the puppy uh photos and she does kind of look like a Leon Burger puppy. Look at this. But she absolutely looks dead ass uh like the Tibetan massive one is a lock. But regardless, these are both very big breeds. And um, the dude said uh, she was a Mastiff mix. Like she was mixed with Tibetan Mastiff. So that's a Leon Burger puppy. This is a Tibetan Mastiff puppy. But depending on how many months they're old, how many months old they are. But here, she looks like a dead ringer for that. You know what I mean? Don't be too confident about Tibetan Mastiff law. Craig, this is sketchy as fuck. And they're a super rare breed. No, I know. 100%. I don't give a fuck what she is, honestly. Like, just like with fish, I didn't know what breed she was. I didn't know what breed he was when I got him. They told me she, uh, he was a Rottweiler. And I was like, sure, whatever. And he was not. He was just like straight up pit bull. And the same goes for, uh, and the same goes for, for, uh, her. Like, I just, I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted like a big dog. Talking about big dogs. Have you been around a Kongal Shepherd? Those things are crazy, huge and full of energy. Love them. What do you mean? Of course I've been around a Congo. Bro, I'm Turkish. What the fuck? She, the features clearly have Tibetan massive in them, but we'll be interested to see how she matures. Yeah. Aren't Congals illegal in the US? I don't think so. PFT is a former Mastiff guy. This morning I said goodbye to my best friend and very good boy, Leroy. Oh yeah, this is like, uh, what kind of Mastiff is this? This is like, look, it's like a bull Mastiff, right? They're so sick. I love Mastiffs. Uh, anyway, they're great. They're great dogs. They get very big. Uh, the thing I love about the thing I love about Mastiffs is a, is like breeds. No matter what kind of Mastiff, uh, I spent a lot of my childhood with a Mongolian Mastiff, very similar to Tibetan. They shed like a lot, and they constantly sleep very low energy. Regardless, though, they're extremely loyal and have really strong guardian exp guarding instincts. Just my experience. Yes. That is what I've seen. So the reason why I didn't want to get like a bull mastiff or anything is because they slobber too much. Whereas uh, uh, she doesn't seem to have that. So here's what I found out about this breed. Okay. Here's what I found out about this breed thus far. That they are one, very agile. They, ha they are, uh, they can get very fast. They get very big. Uh, the female of the breed, we're going to look at some videos in a second, but the female uh, Mastiff gets to, uh, I think like 70 to 120 pounds. Uh, whereas the male gets to 90 to, uh, to 150 pounds. Are you going to lean into her leg in the cold or would you rather her get used to the heat? 
Well, for me, uh, I I'm gonna do whatever she's uh, comfortable with. I I'm getting a, a a like a cold pad. How are you gonna keep her cold in the summer? First of all, it's the summer already. I literally always have. Uh, I always keep it insanely cold in here, regardless. And also on top of that, I got uh, I got AC at the wazoo. I fucking run the AC even during the winter. Okay. So the temperature is always going to be the same regardless. It's LA. And two, um, I, I am going to get like a cool pad for her too. They get really massive. They, uh, this breed gets really fucking massive and I am, uh, excited to see what she grows into. But as far as like the breed goes, like, yeah, it's a very, if it, the, the reason why I don't, one, the reason why I don't think she's, like, actually a full-blown Tibetan Mastiff is also because, like, well, one, we don't know what the mom is. Two, th this is, like, they breed these things, you know what I mean? They're, like, expensive-ass fucking breeds. Bro, that dog won the lottery. I think she'll be just fine. Yeah, I agree. But regardless. Um, here's the average sizes. Minimum uh, 26 inches from the ground up to the top. Minimum 24 inches for the female. Weight goes from 90 to 150 pounds male. 70 to 120 pounds for a female. And the life expectancy is 10 to 12 years. So, like, as far as big breeds goes, uh, this is a breed that lives uh, for a lot it's longer than normal uh, big breed dogs do. Once I give you guys all this, all the info, uh, I will I will give you, uh, you know, we'll, we'll name her. Okay, let's watch. Ancient grandfather of all Mastiffs. Meet the Tibetan Mastiff. The Tibetan Mastiff is a member of the working group. They measure 24 inches and larger, weighing 70 to 150 pounds. An ancient breed developed in the Himalayan mountains as a protector and flock guardian, the Tibetan Mastiff may well be the source from which most modern working breeds descend. Skeletal remains discovered in China place the dog's ancestors in the Stone and Bronze Ages. There are many accounts of Tibetan Mastiffs accompanying the armies of the Greeks, Romans, Assyrians, and Persians. The first dogs to be sent to England arrived in 1847 as gifts to Queen Victoria, and it was there that the breed's current name came to be used. The first known Tibetan Mastiffs to enter the United States did so in the late 1950s as gifts to President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Tibetan Mastiffs are very independent, strong-willed, reserved towards strangers, territorial, and extremely protective of their pack, and may not allow visitors into your home. Yeah, so that's something that I've heard, which is why I need to, like, socialize her aggressively from the jump, um, which isn't really a problem with humans thus far. Obviously, like, uh, there's, like, there have been so many fucking people. There's so many people in this house right now. So how much dog hair shit over the house already? Contrary to popular opinion, um, everybody says that like she sheds a lot, which makes sense. But I think they have like a double coat. So um, because of that, they shed one time uh, or no, twice uh, during the year. And then they don't really shed as much. They are generally calm house dogs, though they may bark at night. This is a large, strong breed, and obedience training is essential. These dogs have minds of their own and are quite sensitive. Puppies need extensive socialization, attention, and structured daily routine. Tibetan Mastiffs generally do well with cats and small dogs, especially other Tibetan breeds. That thick and woolly coat doesn't take much maintenance for most of the year. A weekly brushing will do the job. But be ready for a massive shedding in late spring or summer when a daily yeah. session with an undercoat rake or a de-shedding tool can help keep shedding under control. For more on the Tibetan Mastiff and all of your favorite breeds. Anyway. Um, my neighbors have two of them. They sound like they want to shred me to pieces when I walk by their yard, but they actually have the sweetest doggy girls in the world. Like you said, they go to doggo training with them every week since they were puppies. Yeah. I am going to, 
I am going to uh, obviously start obedience training and puppy training ASAP. And I already have a trainer for, I already have a trainer for her lined up for when she is like a young adult too. And obviously I have already started training her uh, regardless, you know, immediately uh, positive uh, reinforcement and treat training uh, and, and, you know, doing that over and over again. That's, I've been doing that pretty aggressively, um, staying on it nonstop. It's just that, um, it's just that like, it takes so much time and it takes so much effort. You know what I mean? Um, breed standard for the AKC. Oh, here are some of the traits, family life, affectionate with family, very lovey dovey, four out of five, three out of five for good with young children. Uh, good with other dogs, three out of five. I have to socialize her with other dogs ASAP too. Uh, hair everywhere to no shedding. It's a four out of five. Coat grooming frequency is a three out of five. Drooling, uh, three out of five. Uh, coat type is double coat. Coat length is medium. Openness to strangers. They are reserved. Um, they are uh, three out of five playful. They are incredibly vigilant. They're like very protective. The breed's tendency to alert strangers are around. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another reason why I have to like be very, uh, careful with how I train her. Uh, adaptability lives for routine versus, uh, you know, how easily a breach handles change. This change includes living conditions, noise, weather, daily schedule, other variations in day-to-day -day life. This dog is never getting a triple double, triple double with those dogs. Just that's the fuck did you get? She already won a triple double in my heart. Okay. That's it. That's all that matters. But Yeah. I mean, look, I trained my pit bull, uh, who, uh, wasn't, uh, known to be like a very smart breed in general to, to fetch. So pretty sure I'll be able to handle, uh, a, 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 a mastiff mix, especially when she's like, she seems more intelligent than, uh, uh, fish was even, uh, but like, I mean, she's real, she's hella goofy right now. I am a little worried about her hind legs. They haven't like fully developed yet. I feel like, I don't know what's going on there. Like she, she's just like, you know, she jumps around a lot when she's, in, she's getting her puppy zoomies and, uh, she's got long ass nails. So right now, uh, which is part of the reason why I like, she's on the hardwood floor. She like slides a little bit. Uh, I'm obviously going to do a full vet visit and all that. Don't let her jump or walk the stairs a lot at a young age. This sounds like hella work. God damn, my tiny ass apartment wouldn't cope, but we'll definitely smash as a big dog die. You have the space for it. Yes. So obviously one of the, one of the most interesting parts about this, uh, so far for me has been thinking about how fucking broke I was when I got fish and how I had to make do versus now. When, um, I went into, uh, like I went into a, a, a facility, like a Petco style, you know, dog shop and immediately was able to get like $500 worth of shit. Um, knowing full well that she's going to grow out of it immediately. But like, I was thinking about how fucking broke I was with fish and how little space I had with fish originally. And it's just like wild to think. Uh, of, of how difficult it was versus now. I mean, it's obviously always going to be difficult, especially because nanosecond gaming. Thank you for the 20 of the subs, especially because, oh my God, bro. I did not sleep a lot last night. I did not get to sleep a lot last night. She would periodically wake up and yelp. Like just, just would feel lonely and would be scared that she's lonely. So I'd have to wake up and just like sit next to her while she's still in the crate. And the way that I designed it is like, there's basically a crate. There's a pee pad outside of the crate, right? So that she gets up from the crate and can walk. Like there's like a, like a caged area, like the one you see behind me where the crate and the, and the pee pad are inside of the cage area. So she can like get out of the, uh, the crate. The crate is next to my bed, obviously. So she can get outside and pee on it. Except when she did, when she did pee on it, she would then follow through. She would then follow up and, and it literally fucking lay on the pee. Anyway, if you already know, in the beginning, puppies need to be in confined spaces and slowly expand them. Sound like you're already doing well. Yeah. 
The crate might be too big for her, though. I had to sleep on the floor next to the crate for two days before my dog started stopped crying in the crate. Yeah. Some of the people in the comments are disgusting for real. Always have a problem with something. Uh, comments of what? I don't even fucking know what's going on. Uh, I Like, I, to be fair, I don't really care either. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what the outside world's, like, opinion on this is. Um, and I don't even give a shit. <laughs> 